Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and welcome to completely stock Kerbal Space Program 1.12. Well, not not completely completely stock. I have one of my mods in here, the Real Rockets mod, and I am here to test whether it works in stock or not so that I can drop the realism overhaul requirement. And so realism overhaul will only be recommended for my Real Rockets mod instead of required. And I don't have textures unlimited in here, so we'll see how the rockets look without textures unlimited, hopefully they'll look okay. And I don't even have real plume or waterfall, so we'll see how the stock plumes look, but I might retain real plume as a requirement, <laughs> just so that they don't look too horrible, because I didn't really configure stock plumes or anything. So anyway, I'm going to go through the rockets one by one and see whether their Delta V makes sense and make adjustments to the stock configuration. And so there will be a new release, I'm sure of that. Uh, there will be numbers that I want to change and we're starting with Ariane 6 so this is going to be actually if we just do Ariane maybe I'll get the engines as well so this is partly also covering how to put together the rockets so for Ariane 6 uh, the real rockets mod contains Ariane 6 Atlas 5 GSLV Mark 3 KSLV also known as Nuri um, Launcher 1 Long March 3 Long March 5 Neutron New Glenn Pegasus, a very old version of Starship, Vega C, and Vulcan. So those are the rockets we're checking out. And uh, for some of them, I might not have all the bits. Like for Atlas V and Vulcan, I didn't make the SRBs. So you're going to have to put some other SRBs on. But anyway, so let's start with Ariane 6. And I'm going to start with the second stage here. So there we have it, and then put the Vinci engine with no extension. We do have a Delta V there, that's nice. I'm going to put the fairings on, but of course we don't have any payload right now. But it's sort of important that we have the Delta V, and I haven't deleted anything out of the Real Rockets mod. I'm hoping that I don't actually have to go in and delete the realism overall configurations. Uh, for safety's sake, previously I had said if you want to use it, that's the booster. If you want to use it in stock, you should delete the realism overall configurations just in case. There seem to be this, uh, there's a discrepancy in the shading there that I'll have to figure out. But anyway. Da Vinci, uh, sorry, the Vulcan engine at the bottom, like so, and I'll work on staging after I finish it, and the booster decouplers are just surface mount, a pair of them, these are the boosters, Click, and they go on their nodes, make sure you're on their nodes, and then the booster nose cones go on top like that, and we're pretty close to being done, aren't we? Well, there's this Prometheus adapter if you want to use the Prometheus engines with it. And there there are Prometheus engines here, so there's Prometheus and vacuum engines. So if you want to have that version, you stick this on and then stick some Prometheus engines in. I'm not going to test that version or verify that that's okay though. Because um, we don't even have real stats for the Prometheus engine yet as far as I know. But uh, yeah, so that'll be like an Ariane 7 like that. And uh, lucky for stock people, it doesn't matter that the fuel is different for the Prometheus engine than for Vul uh, Vulcane, because these engines all run on liquid fuel and oxidizer anyway, so you don't have to change the tank. So we can adapt it like that, and they'll run with liquid fuel and oxidizer that gives 3,000 meters per second, even as a decent thrust to weight ratio, 1.3. So. That's okay with the Prometheus engines, we can set that aside for now and make sure that this works. And I think, well let's see, we'll just put the boosters and, oop, uh, that's, oh that's the booster nose cones, okay, up there for now. Uh, and the Vulcane engine. Okay, well, that's not a good thrust to weight ratio, so I was sort of figuring this. We would let go of the boosters, so staging would be like this, and then those are the fairings, but the fairings go, I think, after it starts the second stage, I'm not sure. So this would be the start of the second stage. Uh, Delta V-wise, we're fine, but, but, but we haven't got a f uh, payload in. I think a fair payload for this would be like 27 tons. I mean, that's probably overdoing it. So we're at a 2.5 meter tanks. 
I'm just gonna fix them like this. I'm not gonna put a mount or anything. I'm gonna... But you should put a decoupler. I'm gonna lock them. Yeah, 5,586 there. But our sea level thrust weight ratio is not good enough here. So I, th I don't think it's the fuel in here that's the biggest problem. We don't still have a very high thrust weight ratio when they get rid of that fuel. That didn't really do a whole lot. I think it's mainly all the solid fuel in here. I didn't really know how much solid fuel to put in. So let's say I put 6,000. That gives you 66 seconds on the booster. The problem is this much solid fuel is meant for like the real things duration, 2 minutes and 45 seconds, but that's not how Kerbin works. With Kerbin, you don't have boosters that last that long. Uh, I wonder how much a booster of this size would contain... Here's the Thoroughbred. Thoroughbred's bigger. Thoroughbred's got 8,000. I think having 6,000 in here is probably more than enough. So, at first blush, I mean, the, the dry masses may not be right, but as long as you get the right delta V, I think it's fair, and the uh, ISPs aren't going to be crazy. I made sure of that a long time ago. Uh, so, like, the uh, Vulcane gets 330 at the top end, um, Vinci gets 350, so, you know, that those are all pretty reasonable, though they might be imbalanced or require, uh, or maybe it'd be better and they would be higher up in the tech tree. I'm only verifying that they work at all, not that they are balanced for stock, so keep that in mind. So let's just take it outside and see if this whole deal works. If I've underfueled these like that. Go. Ooh. Hmm. It's a little bit loose. Maybe need a little bit more thrust out of them or something. Let's see about the thrust that... I mean, they're getting 1,300. Volcano's getting 218. That could be bumped up too, maybe. Yeah, I guess I rely a lot on Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. It's got this, this thing going on. Again, stock plumes. I never really meant for them to use stock plumes, so... No, uh, but no, that's not that way. This, uh, no, no. Uh, this way, this way. Uh, okay, well, I've obviously gone too far there. It's not like these have fins or anything. Okay, booster set. We. Alright, when the booster accepts, this might not have enough thrust weight ratio. I think we should just bump up the thrust of the Volcane engine. How, what's the duration of this? Eh, well, I mean, that would be fine for real life, but it's too long here. Uh, well, it's still too long for real life, so, okay. And then there's that stage. We, we should maybe bump up the thrust of both of them. Alright, let me make those changes. Alright, well this has ended up more of an involved process just for this one rocket than I was originally imagining, but let's see if it works out. Uh, I'm just going to light the Volcane first and then the boosters, so here we go, and go. Well, now a feistier launch. So again, the Volcane, of course I increased the mass to match up with the increase in thrust, so that it's sort of okay for stock, hopefully. But now we're basically at the Volcane's actual actual performance in terms of thrust, though not specific impulse. Okay, but anyway, if we had the boosters going for longer, then we get to the point where the Volcane with the previous thrust might have worked out, but we have cut down on the duration for those boosters, so now we have to up the thrust of the Volcane. One thing I absolutely don't want is for this to end up in orbit, and it looks okay. The rocket might have more capacity in it, strictly speaking, not to, but... And I gave the Vinci engine its, ooh, its proper thrust as well. 180 kilonewtons. So that fuel is locked, that's 27 tons of payload there. Well, it's sort of acting like this stage would, in terms of how long it's going to take to actually deliver this Delta V. Alright, it's in orbit. It's got some extra, but it wouldn't be able to get to the moon right now.
And how about the RCS? The RCS, well, it's doing something. If I turn it off, okay, okay, so it's not doing things frivolously. It's not super strong, but it can turn this. Probably has plenty of mob propellant, but will turn fairly leisurely. Okay, well, that's good enough for me. Let's move on to the next one, Atlas V. Okay, well, there's a few things going on here, but let's start with the the core. They're all scaled the same, uh, so yep, it's really that small. Um, <laughs> that uh, the there's the centaur core, and then one of these. Whoops, not there. One of those, and there's a 500 series adapter like this, and then a 400 series adapter like that. So for 400 series, which means 4 meter diameter fairing, use this one and then attach the first stage. And then for the 5 meter fairings, so you attach this one, ah, the boat tail first. Boat tail and then the 5 meter fairings. Alright, now it has the load reactor, but uh, the load reactor does not fall off separately. So anyway, but that's the 5 meter one. I'll try with the 4 meter one. It's a number of fairings. Anyway, first stage tank. Reason I'm doing the 4 meter one is because, and we have the RD-180 there, is because we don't have boosters. So we're gonna have core alone and see if it works. Then you can slap as many boosters as you like. But after all, if we're worried about the thrust weight ratio and the burn times, then the no booster version is the most worrisome one. So here, this tank is pretty big. That is a 10 ton tank. Well, normally this, this style probably wouldn't carry that much. Especially without boosters. Maybe, let's say 7.5 tons. That's a good enough fit. And with Centaur, it might be better to send things to higher orbits. But, okay, 7.5 tons on top. Now, let's see what we're getting. Well, that's about right. 4,376 is fine. What's not fine is the sea level thrust weight ratio, 1.1. Well, actually, uh, the Atlas V without any boosters, I can sort of imagine happening that. <laughs> but uh, um, there's a long, long burn time for the RL-10 there. That would be fine for realism overhaul, but probably not for here. And that's a lot of Delta V suddenly. Maybe the Centaur should have less fuel. I mean, this tank is sort of like that. No, that's about that's about the same amount of fuel. So, shouldn't have less fuel based on the volume compared to stock tanks. But then again, it has so much delta V with this payload. See, these these are the problems, you know. The judgment calls. That's not uh, unreasonable length for the first stage. I think I will knock this down a little bit to, uh, let's say, 540 and 660 instead. And maybe cut out the mop propellant a little bit too. Well, it's got a thrust of 101 point. It's got its real thrust, so I'm not putting it higher than that. I mean, I think I meant this core to be about the same size as a 2.5 meter tank and this whole thing is about the size of two of these former orange tanks the jumbo 64s and it's got it's exactly the same fuel as two of these jumbo 64s so i mean i could reduce it it just makes it less efficient given the volume yeah i'll cut the core down just a little bit too Ah, uh, you know what? I think the high delta V had just been because I had forgotten to lock these tanks up here as the payload. And now that I've locked them, it's not too bad. 
Well, if it'll show that. There we go. Well, I mean, the thrust weight ratio still needed to be fixed a little bit for carbon purposes as opposed to Earth purposes. So now we have a 1.33 thrust weight ratio down there. And then with this payload, which is sort of an Atlas V ish payload when it doesn't have its boosters, we have a uh, which got uh, 4,642, which is fine. So it'll overperform a little bit, but not too much. Let's see about any other problems that might occur during launch. So, core alone, you'll have to find your own boosters. Okay, launch. Now, of course, since I originally made these rockets and released the Real Rockets mod, other people have made some of these rockets as well. I'm mainly trying to fill in gaps and make rockets that other people haven't made. Whoa, 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 whoa. And for a while, Atlas V was actually a tough one to find. The plumes should look better with real plume if you decide to use that. I haven't made waterfall configurations yet. We'll push that subject eventually. Well, this engine can throttle down. Well, not that much. I mean, in real life, it can throttle down, but not that much. All right, staging and ignition. Well, I don't know what kind of plume we have on here. Uh, all right, fairings. Um, I'll try and fix this. Um, seems to have a weird plume on it, or weird sound. Anyway. So, okay, I didn't really want to go to a high orbit. Here, we're going to do a severely radial thing to compensate for Kerbin's size. But, uh, yeah, let me just copy the one from the Vinci engine. That'll be fine, I think. And we'll get to orbit, even though that wasn't the best trajectory ever. I just want to see whether the RCS works after this. Okay, so RCS, well, that off, that on. Well, let me turn it off and turn in one direction. Yeah, okay, should be fine. There's no reaction wheel on these at all. Right, right. All right, next one. All right, next up is the GSLV Mark III. Uh, I should just be able to type GSLV and the upper stage is the first part I would pick up and then the CE20, not on that node, make sure the top part of the engine is poking out because the other node is for the lower stage. Uh, this doesn't have any RCS on the upper stage, you'll have to add that. Um, it doesn't have any mop propellant so add those little tanks too. And then we have the MPVE-1s, which go down here. Oop. Oh, anyway. Oop. All right. And I didn't make uh, sep uh, separation things for the boosters, so we'll just have to go with the radial decouplers that we have here. We'll see how that works out for us. Okay, and actually usually they go a little bit lower, and then the fairings. Okay, so a little decoupler and then that makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, so 18 tons, which is more than the capacity of the GSLV Mark III, but you know, the stock dribble. Well, maybe it'll work out exactly right in in uh, JNSQ or something. I think we're overperforming on everything in stock. Probably as intended by JNSQ, things will work out a little bit closer to normal in JNSQ. So the boosters start, and then in flight we start the core engines, and then this will separate and. Uh, upper stage engine will ignite and then well that's after we get the boosters off and right now I don't have any separatrons on the boosters we'll see how that works and then the fairings 
It's possible the fairings go before the second engine, uh, second stage engine starts, and we have enough thrust weight ratio to get off the ground. Very important. And our delta V overall in vacuum. Why is this only 255? Um, that doesn't seem like a whole lot. Well, there's not a whole lot of liquid fuel and oxidizer here. That's probably underdoing that, considering how much we have down here. It's a fair thrust weight ratio for this stage. I, I think I'd like to distribute some more of that fuel to the upper tank, because we're not making enough use from the second stage at all. So, down here... I think there's like one jumbo fuel tank's worth, not, not quite this much. And then up there, maybe we'll say this much. Uh, that's already more than this. So I'm going to uh, edit that, but I'm mostly satisfied with the thrust weight ratios. That's a little bit weak on the upper stage, uh, but that's because it's got this thing attached to it. But it is the GSLB. It's meant to go to geosynchronous orbit with stuff. So probably it's okay. So... No, as long as we don't have all that, yeah, it should be fine. All right, so that's the idea. Let me make those changes and then we'll try to fly it. Okay, so after the rebalancing, our takeoff thrust is 1.29. And then, well, that says 4.0, but that's because the boosters are still on. After the boosters go off, it says 0.46, but we will be in vacuum, so 1.48. And then... Uh, it's just 0.41 with the upper stage, but by that time, we'll probably be already in orbit and you can use that to transfer to the moon or something. So, that is the hope. Let us take it outside and see if there's anything else wrong with it. Oh, well, okay. So, the boosters sort of just sort of dropped and we don't seem to have probe control. Okay, I, well, hmm. I had the antenna to the upper stage. I I did auto strut. I I auto strutted. I auto strutted these boosters to that. But apparently, uh, okay, maybe auto strut to root part might be better. I don't know. I might need actual struts. I don't know why they're flopping all over the place. I mean, I guess they're pretty heavy boosters, fifteen thousand. So you know, yeah, they're pretty heavy. Maybe they shouldn't be that heavy. Let me see. It's got to be really frisky though, otherwise. I mean, maybe they should be more like the Thoroughbreds. 8,000 instead of 15,000. All right, root part seems better. I think maybe they are the heaviest parts, and so that's not a good idea. So I'll start to root part is better. Well, we'll see. So I've increased the fuel load up there, decreased it down there. Uh, hmm. Uh, I'll add SAS, but I'm going to just add it to the payload right now, but I'll add it to the actual stage for the release version. This was a very old model, this particular GSLV Mark III, so... Okay, now we have SAS, throttle up, and go. Ooh, okay, hold on. I don't get it, but all right, I'll put actual struts. Please just use Kerbal Joint Reinforcement or something. <laughs> um, uh, it's It ought to be stock anyway. Okay, two struts each right there. Please be stable. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, launch. Okay, better. The boosters do have gimbling. They might be a little bit OP considering how much solid fuel they carry and everything. But you know what? Honestly, we needed more OP solid rocket boosters. Why are all the boosters in stock KSB so dinky anyway? Okay, well, core ignition. Okay, booster set. 
could use separatrons there. Uh, probably we were having the overheating because well, we're way overperforming here. Uh, because they're supposed to have a thrust tail off. They're actually supposed to decrease in thrust over time, these boosters. We are way high. And yeah, we're not even gotten. I, I definitely want the core stages to end before orbit. So what I'm going to do is reduce the amount of fuel in the boosters and also reduce their thrust a little bit maybe. All right, so now the boosters are lighter and I'm wondering whether we need the struts. I didn't put the struts on. I did auto strut it to root part. Uh, let's see, let's make sure both of those are on there. Oh, those are the core engines. No, nope, wrong things. Okay, yeah, let's see if we need struts. I took off the octo and now uh, the SAS is just inside. And go. Ah, we need struts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Kerbal works. Um, fine. Okay, trying again. Very frisky this time. Each booster is now carrying half the fuel it did before. Okay, core. Booster's off. Uh-oh. Uh, core. <laughs> Oops. I think it'll still make orbit. Just put more payload on it. <laughs> Um, yeah, it still has enough delta V to make orbit here. Okay, fairing set. Well, those fairings go off well. Well, it's not too much extra. Yeah, let's just say it's it's just a little bit extra. We'll dump the stage and sort of okay. The plumes are a little bit big for this one. I mean, the plume is a little bit big for this one. Okay, okay, well, we, I'm gonna pitch down, pitch down, pitch down. Yeah, it has like lunar transfer capabilities with this payload. Or Mooner, Mooner transfer. Okay, weirdly lopsided, but I'm gonna cut it. We're in orbit, and yeah, I could transfer to the moon with this thing or Minmus. So, well, I'll just leave it like that. And next up is KSLV or Nuri. So, KSLV, just type it in again. Third stage, just three stages. Okay, and then the third stage is this engine, which is the KRE-007. Oops, not that far in. Uh, there. Always make sure that the engine is properly showing the other node is for the stage. Second to third stage, inner stage. And then the second stage. And then the... Oops. Oh, is it floaty? Then this... Okay, so that's not going on the right node. So I'm gonna actually put this on first and then put this in there. I think I had to do something similar before because of the way the nodes overlap. Okay, there. And then if I take it off, it looks right. It looks righter. Anyway. So, alright. Remember, we don't have Textures Unlimited in here, so nothing is looking exactly right to me. But... We're seeing whether it's serviceable. So there's the South Korean launch system. Okay, is there another node inside there? Uh, yeah, there we go. That looks better. And it's a three-stager. There's a payload adapter included in this case. And fairings. Now, it shouldn't be carrying too much. 
So we're looking at a little bit over three tons here, and that's probably about right for the rocket. But let's see. Well, as usual, it's overperforming. But we'll probably be about right in J, J and SQ. Okay, sea level thrust weight ratio low. But we have a lot of delta V. And vacuum. The upper stage is a little bit low. And its burn time is a little bit long for 1,000 meters per second. It's not an unreasonable amount of fuel. 20 kilonewtons is probably not an unreasonable strength either. It has the same amount as this tank, the FLT400. So I think I'll just increase the amount of thrust on there. And we can decrease the fuel down here. This looks like quite a lot of fuel. I mean, this one probably shouldn't have more than this. So let me adjust it. Okay, so I've made it the same as this tank, even though it's thinner. We'll just go with that. And then the next stage, I mean, still about that size, but three of them? Now uh, that's a whole lot less, though. It'll have a good thrust weight ratio, but maybe not enough delta V. I'm just gonna cut it in half. Cut what it has in half, I mean. Alright, the changes have been made, and that brings us to 5,454 per usual, basically, at this point. And the sea level thrust weight ratio is 1.68, when the second stage uh, starts out as 1.57, and then it's still light on the third stage, but by that time you're probably using that to transfer to the moon or something, or Minmus, so that, that the longer burn time is probably not a big deal. And they can do that with uh, 3.375 tons inside of it. Which means that it could still launch a Mark 1 pod just fine. Let's see if it works though. At least no boosters that need to be strutted. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. That instantaneous ignition of stock. Very nice. This, this sort of thing going off the side here I don't understand. I guess it's the gas generator exhaust? Maybe? We'll say that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I flipped it. I flipped it. But actually I think it has enough extra that we can still get to orbit with it flipping. <laughs> the flipping was just an extra bit of flare. Okay, staging and ignition. A little bit caught on the inner stage there. Oh, and this... Oh, well, we don't really want the RCS up there happening, but here it has RCS to control roll, so... I guess we can just use it. It doesn't consume the mop propellant that fast. But really, we don't want the RCS up there firing. Well, we can just disable that. Okay, well, this is way too much on the second stage. If you can cram something heavier in there, I don't know, maybe ore or something. If you think that some of these rockets ought to be changed in some way, you can tell me. I mean, for stock. I'm not changing the looks. I'm not redoing the models. I've got plenty of other things to make. Okay, well, we're dumping this with 278, but we got a really high apoapsis out of it. Okay, fairings. That's fine. And why don't we coast a bit? Because it's 9 minutes to apoapsis. Prograde. Oh, let's activate the RCS again. Oh, and stage. Right. Okay. Since I had made everything for real plumes. The plumes are all, like, wrong, but... Anyway, it is in orbit, and so it works works, and it's not insane, but 
you know, whether it's a little bit OP is up to the user, frankly. So, reverting flight. Alright, so those are the ones that I'll review in this video and I'll continue in the next video with some of the others. Uh, turns out that there are more changes than I, that I thought were, would be necessary. I thought we were just going to quickly review how to put them together and it would be close enough, but it turns out there's a little bit more fine-tuning that needs to happen with each of these. So, anyway, that's what these videos will be. Opportunity for you guys to give suggestions, showing how the rockets are built and how they operate in stock for you to decide whether or not they suit your needs. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.